Oh, brother, this guy st- We do not care. You know, this drama really couldn't have come at a worse time. I mean, I am in desperate need of a haircut. I am completely sunburned. I look like a wreck. But uh, I think I finally need to address a couple things once and for all. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Promj. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today, I'm going to be diving headfirst into some spicy, juicy drama that I've somehow found myself in the middle of. Now, the flavor of the day is manga reselling. Now, it is no secret that I buy and resell a lot of manga, you know, whether it be to pay for school or to sustain this very expensive hobby, you know, I buy a lot of out of print manga to read and sometimes I eventually sell it. Other times I'll find an amazing deal on something out at a used store and I'll flip it for profit, you know, I think there's nothing wrong with that and it's no secret that that's what I do sometimes. For the past couple of days, I have replaced Manga Hero as public enemy number one in the manga community for the simple fact that I resell out of print manga, which a lot of people seem to take issue with for some reasons that I find completely absurd and just a whole bunch of other things I'm going to get to today in this video. Now understand that there are a lot of different parts to this whole situation, but I'm going to try to make this video as comprehensive and digestible as possible. I'm going to give all the proper context, go through counterpoints, and just kind of sort this whole thing out and give my opinion on the matter. And like a lot of my videos, this video isn't just to, you know, defend myself against a bunch of people trying to paint me as some sort of villain from Twitter. Um, this is also to start a discussion. Feel free to disagree or agree with me down in the comments below. Give your opinions. I am very open to hearing them all. But with all that being said, without any further ado, I think it's high time that we got into talking about this. All right, so the first thing I want to do is give some context to this whole situation, just in case you guys didn't know what's going on over on Twitter, or you guys have heard it, but you just don't really know all the details. On July 13th, I went to my local Half Price Books and found the deal of a lifetime. I found an almost completed set of Red River and an almost completed set of Basara, which are two extremely desirable and out of print Shoujo B series. I also found a couple of other out of print manga volumes and this Vampire Knight art book, but that's that's besides the point. I spent about $250 for this entire manga haul from Half Price Books and being absolutely ecstatic like I was finding, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of manga for less than $250, I decided to post a picture of my manga haul on places like Twitter and Reddit. Now, a couple days after I got this manga haul from Half Price Books, I went ahead and found the other three volumes that I was missing for this Red River set, volumes 1, 2, and 28, I believe, and then I listed the entire set on places like eBay, Mercari, and MangaSwap. Now, as you can see from these images, the price that I was asking for this set was much above what I bought the volumes for. You know, I got all these volumes for like five a pop, but if you look at the market value of what this series has listed for and has sold for historically, my price isn't too far off the mark. Now, a couple of days ago on the 4th of September, this user known as Fire Lunar, I think is his Twitter and his TikTok. Um, he has a pretty large following. He does a lot of stuff with like manga restocks and news in the anime and manga communities. I think this guy has around 34,000 followers on TikTok and I know way more followers than I do on Twitter, but he basically made this TikTok calling me out for, you know, harming the shoujo community, saying how they already have it hard enough and I'm basically just contributing to this toxic culture of manga reselling. I love seeing people get absolute steals on manga, don't get me wrong. Seeing something like all these shoujo manga for only $250 is incredible. But when you see someone sell one of those sets for five times what they paid for everything, that's insane. There's a lot of people out there that would kill to have a Red River, Basara full collection for really good prices. And when there's people like that doing what they do, it makes it really, really hard for them. And he also posted a tweet of a picture of my eBay listing for Red River, trying to expose me for marking up these manga prices after I bought them for a low price, which, you know, wasn't a secret in the first place, but whatever. And now I have a whole trove of people on Twitter, specifically his fans, uh, all of the shoujo community on Twitter, um, some other notable figures in the shoujo and manga communities. Um, they are all pretty upset with me for committing such a heinous act. So that's basically all of the main details and context that has led us up to this point in the situation that I am now in as the face of manga scalping on Twitter, public enemy number one. And this is not the first time by any means that I've gotten in hot water for reselling manga, specifically on places like MangaSwap. You know, people have gotten upset with some of my prices that I've asked for manga series in the past on multiple occasions. You know, I got things like hurtful messages and being called slurs in the manga discord. People tell me to kill myself. But now that I've been through the ringer a few times, I think it's finally time to just give my piece and explain the situation from my point of view. So the first thing that we have to do that is extremely vital to the point I'm trying to make in this video is to define scalping, specifically 
manga scalping. In my eyes, scalping is when you're buying something that is readily available and selling it on the aftermarket for a marked up price. An example that a lot of us are familiar with is the whole PS5 debacle, you know? PS5s are supposed to be readily available for anyone who wants to buy one, but it's because of supply chain issues and these people who will go out and buy them and mark them up just for profits, that is scalping. To put it in a manga context, let's say somebody went out and bought the entire stock every single copy of the new One Punch Man volume, and then immediately flip them for double the cost to people who just wanted the volume, that would be manga scalping. But this idea of scalping is absolutely not what I do. I sell out of print manga, manga that is not readily available, it is legitimately scarce, rare, and desirable, and I sell it for market value, what is historically sold for or is being listed at. If I went to Half Price Books that day and I found a Golden Age comic book, you know, the first appearance of Superman or something like that, and I went, had it graded, and listed it for, you know, $10,000 or whatever, would that be scalping? No, because it is a legitimately desirable, rare, and not readily available item that people are willing to pay a higher amount than what's on the cover because it is legitimately scarce and it will bring them value to own it. Now, as we've seen in the past year or two, there are people who will go out and buy an entire stock of a Barnes & Noble's Chainsaw Man volumes and immediately go list them on eBay for like five times the price. And I don't agree with doing things like that. I would never go out and buy a bunch of Chainsaw Man volumes or Jujutsu Kaisen volumes and sell them back to the community at an upcharged price knowing that they're going to come back in stock probably like in a month or so. But I hope you guys can understand the distinction between manga scalping and reselling things that have legitimate value and are rare. Now, as many of you guys may know, I have made a couple videos in the past talking about manga scalping, specifically like the half price book scalping manga, or, you know, what's going on with manga scalpers with Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen, you know, I have made these videos and people on Twitter have tried using these videos as ammunition against me to call me a hypocrite. I'll put up a couple tweets on the screen of people calling me a hypocrite because I made videos like these, including this Fire Lunar guy. Um, and the big issue with this claim is that the context of the video is completely different from what I'm doing. In my Half Price Books manga scalping video, I basically talk about this manga pricing software that Half Price Books implemented that takes, you know, what Amazon listings are at, and that's what they decide to charge for manga, even if it is in stock or merely out of stock. And in my other two videos, I believe I made about, you know, eBay scalpers who are selling Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen volumes. Again, I'm talking about manga that is either in print or out of stock. So if any of these people actually took like the 10 minutes to watch this video, then they would know that what I'm talking about in these videos in regards to manga scalping is not the same as what I'm doing with this Red River set. These people are just so lazy that they'll literally look at the title of a video and just stop right there as long as it fits their narrative or the argument they're trying to get across. You know, they don't actually find the needed context that gives value to an argument that they might have had. And then the worst part is that these people with big followings influence their followers to regurgitate these same things, even if the point they're trying to make removes all necessary context and is based on absolutely nothing. Another popular narrative that I've seen a lot of people try and run with on Twitter is that I was caught red-handed selling manga, that this was somehow a secret I was trying to hide from all the manga community and my followers, and that, you know, they ripped off the Scooby-Doo mask and I was exposed. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I have always been extremely vocal and transparent about me selling manga. I've talked about, you know, I bought this manga to sell in my past manga hauls, you know, on certain occasions. I have made it very clear to all of my followers on YouTube and social media that I often buy out of print manga to flip and resell to sustain this hobby and pay for other things like rent, tuition, bills, and all that fun adult stuff. I also want to point out that my username on all of these sites, whether it be eBay, Reddit, or Mercari, my username is the Prom G. It is no secret that I am the one selling these listings. The reason for this is that viewers of my channel will often reach out to me, you know, saying they like my videos, and sometimes they're actually interested in what I'm selling. And in cases like that, you know, I'll cut them a deal. Since I don't have to deal with eBay fees and Mercari fees, you know, I can cut them a deal, especially if they're fans of my videos. It's just an opportunity for people who have supported me and my content to, you know, get deals if they're looking for an out of print series. You know, I don't want to completely knock them over the head if they've been supporting me for all this time. So with all this being said, I was not caught doing anything. Not only am I not doing anything wrong, but it was no secret 
that I'm doing what I'm doing. These people are trying to back me into a corner with this narrative that I was caught doing something wrong, but that is just not the case. I will not apologize for this because I'm not doing anything wrong. I have made it 100% clear from the very beginning. I've also seen a lot of people say that I, the Prom G, am hurting the shoujo community. Now, if there is one good point that Fire Looter makes, it is that the shoujo community has had it pretty rough when it comes to trying to collect these older shoujo beat series. You know, series like Red River, Basara, you know, there are a plethora of other popular series that, you know, shoujo fans want to collect, but they're just so old and have never been and likely won't ever be reprinted. You know, it is definitely not a good situation. But you have to understand, I am not in control of what gets reprinted. All of that responsibility lies on Viz for reprinting their shoujo series. I know like editor Nancy I've heard tossed around, I've been compared to a couple of times. I haven't gone too far into that rabbit hole because that is a very deep rabbit hole that I honestly just don't have the time to commit to learning more about. But from what I've gathered, this editor Nancy is rude to the fans of shoujo series who ask for reprints, you know, basically just tells them off or something like that. You guys can correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong. You know, if shoujo fans want to get mad at Viz Media or this Nancy person, that is completely fine. You know, these are the people who actually have a say or any control over what gets reprinted. Not me. In a perfect world, all manga would be readily available, always in print, it would never go out of stock, and you know, people could buy whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted. But unfortunately, this is not a fantasy land, that is not real life. And I would say that I am pretty experienced in this issue of wanting a series, but not being able to just go out and get it. Take my favorite series of all time, Gantz. I spent so much time and so much money piecing together that set because I wanted it that bad. You can take a look at my manga collection and see very quickly that I've spent a lot of money and time building a lot of out of print sets. Would I have liked to get all these series for retail or deals? Yes, that would have been awesome, but that is not real life. A lot of series that I'm interested in happen to be out of print and that's just the way it is until they get a re-release or a reprint. You know, there's nothing I can do about that. If I see value in buying them for an upcharge, I will do so. If you don't want to do that, nothing is forcing you to. So is me finding a Red River set for a steal and listing it on eBay for market price damaging the shoujo community? Absolutely not. If anything, I'm providing a lucky shoujo fan who's been looking for this series an opportunity to buy this whole set in one fell swoop, of course, if they think that the price is right. Now, real quick, I want to go through a few counterpoints and criticisms that I've seen, you know, here and there, you know, not like big points, but I've seen people, you know, use as arguments against what I'm doing. The first one is that I bought this set of Red River just to sell. Now, even if I did, I personally don't think that there's anything wrong with doing so. You know, if I find something rare that I can make money off of and not hurt anybody, then, you know, I'll take that chance. However, even if this was the case, I've said in past videos that I'm looking to get more into shoujo. You know, series like Red River, Basara, Sailor Moon, Peach Girl, you know, the list goes on. There are series I'm interested in and I'm looking to start reading because I am not well versed in shoujo at all, clearly. But then one might rebuttal, if you actually wanted to read Red River, why did you immediately go and list it online? And the answer to that question is that selling any manga set for over like a thousand dollars is not going to be a quick sell, and this one has not been. What I've actually been doing is reading the physical volumes of Red River because the series does interest me. Now, I've only read the first three volumes, which may not seem like a lot, but keep in mind, I don't live in the same city that these volumes are in. But even if I really did enjoy Red River, the value in me owning this set physically in my collection is just not equivalent to the value I would get out of the money for selling this series, especially when it comes to things that I have to pay for, like bills and tuition. And when the set does sell and I ship out these volumes, I no longer have them to read, what I'll do is just keep reading this series online if I continue to enjoy it, which I don't really have a problem with. The second thing that I see a lot of people calling me out for is selling this series for such a high price. Now, when you look at it on paper, 28 bucks for $1,300 is quite a lot of money for 28 bucks, but again, Keep in mind, a lot of these books, most of these books are out of print, desirable, and the price that I'm asking for these volumes is right around market price for what these volumes have historically been listed at. And my listing is honestly probably one of the cheaper Red River manga sets that you can currently find on today's aftermarket. You also have to keep in mind that I'm trying to sell the set on Mercari and eBay, which take a massive amount of fees, you know? I am not going to see $1,300 once I sell the set. It would probably be a little over a thousand. Factor also into that shipping costs 
and the price of insuring a manga set that's worth $1,300. That is another expense that comes right out of my cut. But besides all of those expenses, like I said earlier, my list price is right alongside the historical sold price for this set on the aftermarket and is one of the cheaper sets you can currently find on places like Mercari and eBay. But I'm being attacked for it. I'm being called the villain because I'm a manga YouTuber and people feel like I'm supposed to be held to some different standard than everybody else and everybody who has ever sold out of print manga on the aftermarket. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Another thing that factors into this price is that a lot of people are going to see the value there for the price for having this series complete in one fell swoop. People have been searching for years for some of these rare volumes to complete their set. And you know, for some people who have the means, they have the money, buying this listing will be very worth it because all of that effort, all of that time and energy spent searching for these volumes to complete a set over years is just mitigated with one purchase. Now, one thing that this guy brought up in his TikTok is that some volumes of Red River are still in print. And this is true. If you go to Right Stuff Anime, you will find a grand total of seven volumes still in print of Red River out of the total 28. So yes, it is true that the series is not 100% out of print, but just because there's seven volumes still in print, not even in stock, but just in print, there are still a lot of volumes from the series that are nearly impossible to find. And that is why Red River is being listed by not only me, but everybody else selling set for the prices that they're asking. Again, adding into the value of just having it all in one purchase is very valuable for a lot of people. I've also seen some people say that I'm ripping people off. And this one is very common, but is one of the more brain dead takes that I've seen. You know, luckily people who actually know what they're talking about have refuted this and pointed out that this is not true. But for the ones in the back, I'll go ahead and explain it in this video. I am not forcing anybody to buy anything from me. The only reason that somebody would buy something from me is because they see the necessary value in the purchase. You know, I'm not having anyone's hands tied behind their backs. I have no guns to anybody's head. If you don't want to buy this, don't buy it. There are people out there who will buy this. 95% of people who see this listing who want Red River will say that price is too high. I'm not willing to pay that amount for 28 books. And that is completely fine. You can do whatever you want with your money. It is not for me to judge or for anybody else to judge. So the question becomes, how do I rip somebody off who's making a voluntary purchase for something they see value in? It's such a simple concept. I'm surprised more people don't understand how basic transactions work, but you know, it is social media, it is Twitter. What can you really expect? This next counterpoint is a very interesting one because I have absolutely no clue where it stems from, what its origin is, what basis this claim has. But um, some people have said that I have abused my platform as a content creator. Again, like I said, I have absolutely no clue where this take even comes from. You know, maybe they think that because I'm a YouTuber, people will see that I'm selling something and say, oh, he's a YouTuber, therefore I have to buy it, which is just completely absurd in its own right. But I'm just trying to give any basis that I can possibly think of to this claim because it is just completely ridiculous. If anybody's abusing their platforms, it's these people who have, you know, way more followers than I have or probably will ever have spreading misinformation and lies about me and just removing context for their arguments. Um, that's probably a little bit more on par with abusing a platform, but hey, that's just my opinion. The next take is another one that I've seen many times in the past, but it's just completely untrue. People say that I only buy out of print manga for the point of reselling or looking cool. Um, if you look at my manga collection and you hear me talk about series that are out of print, you know, I read my manga. I have read over 90% of my entire manga collection, a lot of which happens to be out of print and a lot of which I don't plan on ever selling because I absolutely love the stories and I love having the volumes in my collection. I think this take basically just boils down to people being jealous of what I personally have, what I have spent the time and money to accumulate and, you know, I personally think that you should never let somebody else's collection influence your, you know, self-worth, what you feel you have to buy. But, you know, that's not going to stop people from being jealous and hating on me for having out of print series, trying to find any excuse to discredit me. Um, and in this case, it's not going to work. And this last one I find very funny. This one person on Twitter said, you know, he's acting like it's no big deal. He's trying to make some kind of joke out of this heinous situation. How could he? If you think that this situation, this whole drama is really anything truly meaningful, you need to get a life. This whole drama is just people pocket watching and hating on people for doing something that is completely legitimate to get money. And 
It's just so sad seeing people think that this is some truly groundbreaking, you know, big issue in the Hmong community that I'm doing such a terrible thing. It is not that serious. Not only am I not doing anything wrong, but this is a freaking collecting hobby. Who cares? So yes, in response to this comment, I will continue to act like there is nothing wrong, like this is no big deal because I'm not doing anything wrong and this is no big deal. Also, another thing that I literally just thought of is that in that manga haul, I bought a sealed copy of Vagabond, I think like volume 26, and I sold that for $70. Why is the Vagabond community not up in arms at my neck for reselling a rare volume of manga, you know? If the shoujo community and all these people on manga Twitter are so upset with me for selling something rare for market value, why is nobody talking about me selling this Initial D and this Vagabond single? Maybe we can start this discussion as well. Feel free to respond to this if you do have a problem. Out of print manga and expensive manga sets is something that affects literally every creator who looks to buy an out of print series. It is not just shoujo collectors, and I think they're only upset because this is like a shoujo series. But notice how they're not upset at me trying to sell 10 volumes of Osama Tezuka's Phoenix for $900, you know, that's not really an issue because it doesn't affect them, but it's literally the exact same thing that I'm doing with Red River that I'm doing with Phoenix. So, you know, there's a little bit of a disconnect there. I also want to take a minute to address some tweets from Colleen's Manga Rex. Um, I was aware of this person. They're pretty big in the shoujo manga community over on Twitter and on, uh, I believe they have a YouTube channel as well. Um, but they basically said, if I can pull up the tweet, what they said was, it's not just the 500% markup on a series you got for less than 250. It's also the fact that you said shoujo collectors were more deserving and were excited to get into shoujo on the haul video you made while already having it listed on ebay a week prior so to break this one down like i said i gave the reason why i listed it this is not a quick sell i have been reading red river i did not lie about wanting to get more into shoujo so that explains the second half of the tweet and as for me saying that shoujo collectors were more deserving um she's referencing some things that i said in my most recent manga haul i believe where i said you know there are a million shoujo collectors that are probably more deserving to have found this set in the wild and yeah if somebody who had actually been looking for red river like actively for years found this set in the wild like i did i would have been so happy for them to have finally found this grail for an amazing price but that's not what happened somehow due to some twisted sick fate i was the one who found myself in the half price books i was the one who found the deal do i the prom g deserve it probably as much as somebody who really really wants the series does um uh, probably not i'll still stand by that but that is not what happened this is the timeline we were living in i'm selling this red river set that i found and that's just how it is life is not fair then she went ahead and responded to her own tweet saying you say it's to pay for a hobby but guess what this is other people's hobbies too and people who actually want to own these series again life is not fair there are series that other people have that are selling that i want to own but you see me going out hating on people on twitter and complaining all the time no I just get my money up or I wait for another opportunity to come or I can get it for a better price. Similar to what I said earlier in the video, I'm not out here to run a charity to give people who I don't know, who don't care about me, great deals. You know, I'm out here to get money for myself, to support my hobby. That just happens to be other people's hobbies as well. That's just how it is. So in conclusion, this whole drama was a complete shit show. I was exposed for something that I had been completely open about doing something that is morally right in my opinion that there's nothing wrong with and thankfully most people had my back with this but again there are these vocal minority of people that feel like attacking me is the right thing to do and I completely understand that I'm open to criticism you know when I started this YouTube channel I did not expect to make content and exist in some sort of vacuum where people couldn't comment on my actions or my content you know that's not what I went into this looking for and that's not what I've gotten, clearly. But just as you are free to criticize me, I am free to criticize your criticisms and to point out all the holes in your logic and give my personal opinions on why this whole drama is no big deal. How what I'm doing is nothing wrong and how this whole thing is just being blown out of proportion by people who get way too invested in their hobbies and get upset by very minute things and how other people choose to do with their products and how people spend their money, which is just dumb. If I have any closing statements, I guess um, thank everybody who follows me on Twitter, all these manga tubers who actually see the truth and can see past these false narratives that people are trying to paint on me. Uh, thank you for having my back and for speaking up the truth and for what you believe in, you know. Having my back in this whole situation, though it is a completely silly drama, really does mean a lot to me. Also to Fire Lunar, why did you block me on Twitter when all I was doing was defending myself against claims that you were making? Um, you know, I'm free to defend myself and you're free to block 
block me. And it just kind of goes to show how fragile you are. I did like your account. I liked following you. It's a shame that I no longer can do so or see your tweets. But if you feel like blocking me because I defended myself against your nonsensical attack on my reputation, um, then I guess go right ahead. And again, if any of you guys disagree with what I've said in this video, feel free to comment down below. Keep this discussion going because I honestly really don't want to have to talk about this again. So I just want to air everything out down in the comments below if you disagree with me or if I didn't mention something down in the comments below. Let's just get it all out in the open. This is an open discussion. I have nothing to hide. But I also hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, drama is pretty entertaining. It's pretty fun to have it once in a while. And, you know, being in the middle of it definitely isn't very fun. But I figured I'd take this chance to, you know, make a little light of it to defend myself and to spread the conversation. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today in today's video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah, this has been the Prom G. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as always, hope to catch you in the next one.